Hi again, everyone. Uh, so now these are two. Well, the first of two PowerPoints I'm going to go through. These are the final versions. So these are what I would expect you to have in September after you've sent your first version to us and we've given you ways to improve it. You will be presenting this final version as well. Usually you present your practice as well, but um, well, you're welcome to record yourself on Teams doing that. Um, that's up to you. Um, but otherwise, that's not going to happen. But definitely in September, I want you to be recording your uh, presenting your final version. OK, so remember, these are final versions. So this one is a personal investigation and the title is Futurism. Introduction by giving us two images that relate to futurism. So I guess you don't know what futurism is. This PowerPoint should tell you what it is. Futurism is movement and idea, is a movement and an idea created by an Italian poet, Filippo Marinetti in 1909. He launched this as a way to show that people need to free themselves about past culture and, cele and celebrate modern advances in society. So this is an introduction straight away to what he's going to talk about. Um, it gives more there. And then next, and there's an image, of course, he talks about his first artist. He doesn't actually need these. Hang on, let me just see if I can do this. He doesn't need these here. Why are they there? I don't know. But he doesn't need them. OK, um, it looks a lot better like that. It looks a lot more professional. I think they're in all of them. So he's talking about his first artist, Fortunato de Perro. Um, what does he say? He was one of various artists influenced by futurism and movement that emerged at the time of the Industrial Revolution. This is when machines and technology were in their advanced, advanced stages. Him through his painting and advertising designs brought new ideas. It would be really good if he talked about more about it. Smaller writing, maybe. But then he's going to talk more about it in his essay, I guess. Um, these are some of his pieces of work, I'm guessing. You can see here that the writing and the titles aren't very clear, so it needs to be made clearer than that on yours, please. Um, that's much better. Um, he should have made the images slightly lower down. Um, maybe put the titles at the bottom and just have the text at the top explaining. Bianchi cycles. Again, he could have changed this. Why don't I just do it for you and show you what I'm talking about? Let's have a look. Isn't that better already? Really? And I think I would have had it the other way around so that the writing was on the left, but that's a personal thing. And maybe like here, let's just do this. Yeah. So just little things that improve it. Better Boccione, how would I do this? So I would get rid of this. I would get rid of this. I would maybe ooh, push this up, have the text at the bottom. Like this, yeah. Like that and that like this. I hope this is helping. And I would have separated them out just a little bit so the space so we can see that they are for definite two images and maybe something like that. Let's have a look at that. That looks better, I, I would say. Um, so this is Umberto Boccioni and we have a title. We have the, the year it was made as well, painted as well. And then we have, see, that does not need to be like that. Yeah. So again, title, paint, uh, title and painting um, year. And then we get a bit about this person. Again, you don't need, you get the idea now. So here again, would we, do we need these bullets? 
Finder remembered that they're called bullet points. Could we not just do it like that? Make that there, make that even bigger. Pull this down. I'm just thinking of composition, really, how it looks on the screen, how easy it is for us to read. Because the easier you make it, the easier it to read, the easier it will be when you come to present it. Wouldn't you agree? So if I'm pushing this up and I'm changing that around and I'm pushing that up and doesn't that need to be a capital letter as well? So already it reads better except for the bottom. You can't see it, but you would be able to see it if it wasn't a film. Again, that the composition there could be improved. We want to be able to read this easily, don't we? And um, this is his third artist now. And then he's summarizing. The summarizing is good. The summarizing looks fine. And that's it. Now I'm going to show you another one. Let's get rid of that. I think I'm getting better at this. Uh, let's go up. Now, you have seen these, but I bet you've forgotten them. So, title chiaroscuro. I'm guessing you don't know what chiaroscuro is unless you remember watching this. What is chiaroscuro? Immediately, we have an introduction. Um, three images, a title, Leonard, Leonardo da Vinci sketches. Chiaroscuro is an Italian word which means the use of strong contrast between light and dark. Usually, it is bold contrast affecting a whole composition. Well, you can read the rest. Um, it began in the Renaissance. And so that's your that is your introduction. You need an introduction. And what is this is great. So before she's gone to her artist even, she's gone. So you won't know what Renaissance is. So now here's what Renaissance is. The revival of European art and literature under the influence of classical models in the 14th to the 17th centuries. OK. And then she goes into her first artist. So it's, let's go back. Chiaroscuro, that's her first slide. Second slide, what is chiaroscuro? Third slide, what is the Renaissance? So this is your introduction, pre-introduction, introduction, and then your first artist. And it's really nicely laid out, very nicely laid out. Um, very nicely laid out, don't need the bullet point though. Again, nicely laid out. Leonardo has used chiaroscuro to contrast. So these are examples of chiaroscuro that she's talking you through in the Last Supper, which I imagine she's got something to say. So on some, there's quite a lot of text, and on some, there is not much text. So she's talking us through this. Beautiful. You should go and see that at the National Gallery. When the National Gallery opens, it's a beautiful piece of work. It's there for all to see. It's huge as well. Um, good use of chiaroscuro as well. Baroque art, so here's another one. Caravaggio, so this is interesting. She's talked to us through the Renaissance and now she's looking at Baroque art. So she's done the three artists, but she's also given us more information. So she's really gone, gone to town on it, whereas the first PowerPoint I showed you was very basic in that sense. So Caravaggio, very nicely presented. She's talking about how he works. He's not giving us anything about his life. Don't care about his life so much. We just want to know how he makes his work, why he makes his work. OK, how and why? Not when he was born, although, you know, sometimes that might be important. Excellent, really big images, really huge. No text. She can talk us through this. She knows her work. Brilliant, she's done a close up. So she's done a close up of that. That's great. More, more. And then she's talked us through this word tenebrism. So any words that you think we don't know or you don't know, give us some definitions. Excellent, just images. Be nice to have um, a title there. Maybe the title's hidden. Another one. Another one. Artemisia Gentileschi. So this is um, an extra one. Someone who was taught by Caravaggio. I know this because I gave her this one. So she's very influenced by Caravaggio because Caravaggio was her teacher. And you'll see, um, well, 
if you can remember, there are those Caravaggio's on the left and hers is on the right. Um, she should have put Caravaggio and, but that's good, that's amazing as well. So then we go to Rembrandt. Um, she was very influenced by Rembrandt. Big images, and she's looking at the, the white triangle. Sorry, that's an alarm outside. Um, you get the idea, don't you? Lots of images. And then she was looking at art that was influenced by chiaroscuro. Um, and these are films from the early 20th century. Uh, so film noir, and that's it. Um, Nosferatu, horror films and film noir. Um, we don't need to go through all that, what that film noir is. But it just gives you an, a really good idea of a PowerPoint. Remember, her, her first PowerPoint was a little bit more basic than this. Um, but this is her last one. And um, I think you, we agree it's a very good PowerPoint. And then she did her essay based on this. OK, so her essay came from this. And the next four months of her work from September to February came from this as well. If you remember, she was doing her self-portraits, her portraits of other students, her portraits of Sally. You, I think you remember what she was doing. Um, but it all came from this. So this is her personal inv investigation. Chiaroscuro, dark and light. It's all about the light. OK, I again hope that helps. I'm not going to put this as a PowerPoint slide. So you can see it. It's. I'm just going to keep it as a film because if, I think if I give you that, then, um, well, I'm not going to anyway. So hope that helps, and I will.